Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Morgan's Pop Talks, breaking down the biggest headlines in reality TV and pop culture. How are we? Special day today in the world of Morgie, although it's like a good day, but it's also kind of sad because today is fiance David's 33rd birthday. And I don't know if this is a fun fact or maybe a not so fun fact, (laughs) but David and I have known each other for 12 years. We've been together for five and a half years. How many birthdays do you think I have spent with him on his birthday? Are you ready for the answer? One. (laughs) I spent one of his birthdays with him, and it was the very first birthday that he had that I knew him. It was his 21st. It was like after I experienced him at his 21st birthday, I was like, I will never spend another birthday with you ever again. No, I'm just kidding. It always just works out that way. You know, he comes to the States for my birthday and our anniversary is in January and, you know, the holidays. So he always seems to be back in London in May, which is the case yet again. We're still waiting on our fiance visa, although uh, we have seen some movement, not particularly in our case, uh, but I'm, I'm a part of like all these visa support groups on Facebook because how else are you going to learn anything in life? unless you're in the Facebook group for it. And we're starting to see people that uh, submitted their applications in late March and early April start to get approved. And we submitted our application in May. So fingers crossed that it's going to be happening soon, that he's going to be able to marry me, you know, casually. Anywho, I have such a wonderful episode today for you. We are going to hear from Summer House newbie and star, if I do say so myself. Samantha Fayer is here talking Winter House, uh, talking reunion, talking about her first season as a Bravo celebrity, and you guys are going to love her. But first things first, Vanderpump Rules and the Skin of All has sent us into full blown panic attacks again. It's like every single time you think that this thing is dying down. Nope. Surprise. There's more. So this week, our first story we're going to talk about in the pop three is the Vanderpump Rules leaked finale trailer. When I say that this sent me into a full blown spiral, it was not something that I was expecting. It's like, we know we're going to see this footage. We know we're going to see Tom and Ariana fight. We know we're going to see the girls rally behind Ariana. We know that we may even see Tom and Raquel kiss on camera, but knowing that you're going to see it and seeing it two totally different experiences. And I'm not going to lie. I felt like nauseous. I made the joke on my Instagram that I had to take Tums. I'm not joking. I had to take three because I was that wound up about it all. So I saw the leaked footage first, which had some different parts in it to the Bravo release trailer. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, But to kind of set the scene, there was a leak, right? And it was on these... Instagram accounts is like leaked version of the trailer for the finale. And at first I was like, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it, but it sucks you in. You watched 0.1 second of it. You're watching the whole entire thing. Um, So not long after Bravo put out the whole trailer and the caption was like, you thought you saw the trailer. This is it. I mean, clearly they were not expecting to release the finale trailer so early. I mean, it was May 2nd. The finale isn't until May 17th. Uh, So they just had a very quick choice to make. Do we let this leaked footage get out there or do we kind of step in immediately, get our own out there and us become, you know, the talking point and not these random Instagram accounts that have this footage. So that's definitely what they did. Um, I did hear that they're investigating the leak. Somebody's going to get fired. Uh, But regardless, we get some chilling moments. Uh, We see Sheena's conversation with Tom. Uh, We see Schwartz talking about the fallout of the business. We see Tom and Ariana's big fight, the return of Kristen Doty. It's like each little snippet of it in its own right is enough to send you into full-blown panic attack. But when I saw Kristen Doty, I I borderline fainted, passed out, out cold. I don't remember two hours after that happened because I blacked out. Um, But the worst part to me, and I think for everybody, is seeing Tom and Raquel together. Um, And this was the leaked trailer. And this little portion, this little snippet was not in Bravo's trailer. Tom is like stroking Raquel's face with this 
thumbs and they're like gazing into each other's eyes in a very couple-y way. And she's like, we said we'd never do this if I didn't think it was worth it. She's smiling, laughing. And then you get the official trailer and she's smiling and laughing again. I want to smack that stupid smile right off her face. She's like, this turned out so horribly wrong. I mean, what did you think? This turned out so horribly wrong. Did you think it was going to be rainbows and butterflies? What did you think? I mean, actually, the problem is I don't think she actually does think things through. Something is off. Even seeing that snippet, I was like, something is off. Something is not firing on all cylinders or she's clearly diabolical. And, you know, Tom, we see him get caught up in the lies, too. And I'm not just 100% putting the blame on Raquel, but at least Tom's not like laughing it up, you know, like what was that? What was that? And we also see Tom get caught in a little bit of a lie uh, because he says to Sheena, I was going to break up with Ariana regardless, but you told Howie Mandel, interviewer of the century that you broke up with her on Valentine's Day, Tom. So which one is it? Speaking of Howie Mandel, you know what really just grinds my gears is the fact that twice now on my pop culture and reality TV podcast, I've had to talk about Howie Mandel. If I never had to talk about Howie Mandel ever again, I would be perfectly fine with him. But he's really inserting himself in this drama. And we have to start a campaign justice for Howie Mandel's daughter from what we learned from his interview on Nick Vile's podcast. Howie Mandel went on Nick Vile this week with Jacqueline, his daughter, and somehow Tom Sandoval is still the, like, Howie Mandel is further up on the not likable list for me than Tom Sandoval. Uh, he went on there to defend his interview. He tells us what we already knew, that this interview was set up through a mutual connection. It was like Howie's podcast producer is married to Tom's drummer and tour manager. And that the agreement was, you are not going to ask Tom any questions, Howie. It was simply the opportunity for Tom to get his narrative out there. No if, ands, or buts. And what I found really interesting about this interview with Howie, Jacqueline, and Nick is that Howie's daughter is the avid Vanderpump Rules fan. She's like, I stayed up all night. I wrote pages of notes. I wore my send it to Daryl hoodie like before walking in there and how we, how we said to our daughter, no, you can't do any of that. This is not the time or the place to ask him any follow-up questions. You are not, you know, digging for information. This is just simply for him to tell whatever narrative he wants to tell. Um, some things that Jacqueline said she wished she would have been able to ask. She brought up, um, or she wanted to ask him about everything. He talked about Ariana going to therapy and wanting him to fertilize her eggs and going back on her convictions about not having kids. Seems like she was doing it, you know, for him and to work on their relationship and whether he acknowledges that. And how he like goes into saying that it was a trap by Ariana, that that was Ariana's way of trapping him. Or at least that's how his whole thing is like, I, Howie Mandel, don't have an opinion. I'm just taking what Tom Sandoval is saying. And Tom Sandoval is saying that Ariana was trying to trap him. He says at one point, he's 40 years old. He's depressed. He's trying to get out of this relationship that she wouldn't release him from. And we're like, no, that's not the case at all. And that's the reason why so many people had such a big problem with this interview is that he's just spewing nonsense. I mean, we've seen from the episodes that that is not true. So he was like, I was like, you know, that's just what he told me. I'm not judging him. I'm not judging her. It kind of seems like you are judging her, Howie. And if you're not judging her, you're doing a really bad job at relaying the fact that you're not judging her. Um, and both Howie's daughter, Jacqueline, and Nick is like, dude, we've seen this show and it's not true. But Howie's like, nope, that's what Tom said. And I'm taking him at his word that he was depressed. Howie's just digging himself deeper, in my opinion. He refuses to look at it from any other perspective besides Tom's. 
Can I just say justice for Howie Mandel's daughter, Jacqueline? Jacqueline, were you silent or were you silenced? She was silenced. She had pages of notes that she wanted to ask Tom as a Vanderpump Rules fan. And Hallie was like, no, you can't do that. And he's still like, he's still like, I don't understand the hoopla, the hoopla. Howie Mandel, you're never going to understand the hoopla. You're willfully ignorant about the context of Scandaball. You haven't been invested in these people for 10 years. And not only that, you had the opportunity to find out what the hoopla was about, but you didn't want to do the research because you didn't care. You just wanted to hear Tom's narrative, no if, ands, or buts about it. You know nothing about the restraining order, the TMZ paparazzi interviews that may or may not have been staged, the restaurant, watch what happens live, the subliminal messages from their seven-month affair that they're posting on Instagram. Was it a media circus? Absolutely, because it was a nuclear bomb 10 years in the making. So Howie Mandel, stop complaining about the fact that you don't understand. You don't want to understand. You don't want to understand unless you want to go back to season one, watch every single episode, become invested in the show, and then maybe you'll understand a little bit better. But if you don't understand now and you don't want to do any of the digging to figure out the context of Scandaval, stop complaining that you don't understand what all the hoopla is about. Okay. I hope to God I never have to talk about Howie Mandel ever. Again, it's the coronation this weekend. Megan is not going. Prince Harry is going. He's sitting in the back. It's like when you don't want your parents to know that you were late to church. You just like sneak in the back. You're like, boop. And mom's texting you. Where are you? You're like, I'm here, mom. I'm just in the back. Like, I want to take it all in. So Meghan Markle had the perfect out of getting out of the coronation because it's on the same day as Prince Archie's fourth birthday. And we need a balloon wall at home in California for Prince Archie's fourth birthday. I mean, seriously, you can't argue with a four-year-old's birthday party. Perfect out. And I'm not being sarcastic at all. That really worked out wonderfully for Meghan Markle. And I think that it's right that Harry goes because you know, despite everything that's gone on, you don't want to get to the end of your life and wonder, you know, what if at the end of the day, Harry is a part of the royal family, no matter how involved he really is or does not want to be. You don't want to get to the end of your life and say, wow, I I really should have gone to see my dad, you know, be sworn in as the king of England, uh, despite all the turmoil, you know, there's still family reports are that Harry won't be a part of the ceremony at all, which at first is like, okay, yeah, compromise. He's going to go, but he's not going to be a part of it. I swear the word hoopla lives in my brain now rent free. And I hate Howie Mandel because of it, because coordination could also kind of be hoopla if you really think about it. But anyways, at first you're like, okay, I get it. Like doesn't want to be involved. It's fine. But then you think about it from the lens too. Like you look back on your life and you are part of the royal family and you're like not a part of maybe the biggest one of the biggest days in the history of your family. I think it would be kind of sad to not be involved if I was Harry. Um, And not to mention, like if Harry and Meghan were still working royals, how different the coronation would look. I just, I feel like they're going to feel the void, both Harry and the rest of the royal family. And I think it is sad. You know, there are these reports that Harry is going to be 10 rows back. How many, how do you know how many rows back Harry is going to be like, come on. And sometimes it's like former Butler says, Harry is going to be 10 rows back. Former, but how does the former Butler know what the seating chart is going to be? They don't, they just want to be in the daily mail once or twice. What I do think is interesting is there has always been, when it comes to the royal family and this drama with Harry and Meghan, there's always been a next thing, you know, to kind of keep them together, whether it was the passing of King Philip and then Queen Elizabeth and now the coronation. This kind of feels like the last order of business. You know what I mean? It also feels that way on Harry and Meghan's side, though, because they had the Oprah interview, then they had the Netflix documentary, then you had the book. And it's like on both sides. Now what? You know, is a question that everybody is asking on the royal family's side. It's like, now what? The coronation is over. You know, 
maybe things are going to die down. Where does that leave us to move forward with Prince Harry? And then on Harry and Meghan's side, it's like, you know, we've done it. We've done the interview. We've done the documentary. We've done the book. Now what? So I don't know. I just think it's sad all around. I wish everybody could just get along. I mean, what do I really care if they get along? <laughs> Or not. Okay, let's move on to our deep dive. And this week, we're sitting down with Samantha Fayer, newbie to Summer House. And you guys, I love her. I really think that her and Corey are the future of Summer House. They're also just on social media. And I talk about this with Sam too. Corey and Sam are carrying the show on their back because we know it's kind of been all doom and gloom. And this was the best episode of Summer House, I thought, of the season. Watching Carl and Lindsay get engaged. Andrea is back. You know, Chris and Danielle having a moment to represent their culture. I really enjoyed this episode. I know there were some mini moments with Danielle. And the reason we're not talking about the episode this week is because we all know that next week's episode is going to be when the bomb really drops. So we'll save it. Uh, but for now, let's hear from Summer House newbie, Samantha Fair. Hot off the Summer House reunion. We will get into that in a little bit, but I want to welcome to MPT, Sam Fair. Hi, Sam. Thanks for joining. Hi, Morgan. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. So nice to meet you too. We have so much to discuss, but I guess first and foremost, I want to say welcome to the Bravo sphere. How are you adjusting? Because I know this fan base is wild. What has it been like for you? Um, it has been wild. Exactly what you said. <laughs> um, I was not much of a reality TV girly before this, so mm -hmm. I am very slowly um, adjusting to the learning curve of you know, all the chaos that comes with this, but it's been really fun. You know, like it's, it's, I've made some amazing friends. It's, there have been some very cool opportunities. I couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. And we're just getting started. So you just mentioned that you, you weren't a reality TV girly. How much of Summer House did you know, were you familiar with and what were you doing before making your debut? So I had not really watched any of the show. Um, when it got right down to the wire right before the summer, I was like, I should probably watch a couple episodes of this just to like see what I'm getting myself into. Um, so I did do that, but um, I didn't want to watch enough that I like thought I knew anybody, if that makes mm, sense. Yeah. Like, because I wanted to, you know, make my own friends on my own terms mm -hmm. and um, go in with kind of a clean slate. So that's what I did. And I think it worked in my favor because I did leave with a lot of really great friendships. And, um, you know, it was all organic and it all kind of happened from from ground zero. So I'm really glad I did that. And what were you doing before TV? Um, I'm still doing it. I run a marketing agency here in the city. Um, so it's a busy lifestyle working for yourself. I always say like I quit my nine to five and I work 24 hours, seven days a week. <laughs> um, so it has been a little bit of a balancing act, especially the last seven or eight months. Um, but yeah, I, I love my work. It's something I'm super passionate about and um, I could talk your ear off about it, but I know <laughs> that's not everything you guys want to know today. So I will spare you. <laughs> well, I do think it's really interesting. And I think now that I know that you're a marketing and it's the fair agency, right? That's the name yep. of it. Yeah. It was like a light bulb moment to me because you were really the one that were, that was posting all these BTS Polaroid cameras. And I was <laughs> like, Sam single-handedly is hyping the show up, you know, more so than we've seen in the past. And I'm like, Oh, marketing that makes 100 yeah. percent sense like it's literally my job and i always like joke about that because you know it's not super strategic i really did just want to share the bts with everybody but you know it is something that um i you know i've been a social native for my entire life like i was born i was i was born with an iphone in my hand so <laughs> um you know i love sharing this stuff and i think it gives the audience a little sneak peek into our real lives and our real friendships and um and i think people are enjoying it so i'm gonna keep doing it. Yeah, they definitely are because there's so much stuff that we don't get to see and we get it. We're not new to TV. You know, you have an edited down version. It's an mm -hmm. hour show with commercial breaks. So I really have loved seeing those clips from you, especially because a big question that's been coming up this season is like, and we'll get into this later, but are these people really friends? Cause you see yeah. so much drama and I know you guys are, like I said, we'll get to that, but you knew Amanda first, right? Yes. 
So how did you know her? Um, Amanda used to be a graphic designer at Lossy 10, which is like a skincare, like soaps and fragrances brand. Um, and I've always worked in journalism. I'm a creative. Um, and so, you know, all the creatives, like it's a pretty small circle in New York. Everyone runs into each other at one point or another. Um, so we had kind of just had mutual friends and like things in common. Um, so we had run into each other a couple of times. We were definitely more on the like acquaintance side than we were really like besties. Um, but I was very happy to make her a close friend this summer. Um, one of the very first things she said to me was, you remind me so much of my husband. It's scary. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay. I don't know if that's really really good or really bad, but we're going to find out. It's good. We love it. I mean, if it wasn't good, we wouldn't have a hit show in Summer House. So <laughs> right, right. It's perfect. What did Amanda say when you told her that you were going to join Summer House? Did she give you any advice going into it? Um. Yeah. I mean, her advice was very simple. She was like, just be yourself, like do whatever you would do. You know, the stakes are higher. It's a little weird doing this in front of cameras. Right. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you know, I think the the way to approach this is to just do exactly what you would do in a normal share house situation. Um, nothing about it is different really, except for the cameras and like the audience and all of that. But she was like, that is so far down the road. The audience even seeing this, that like, you can't think about it now and you can't, you can't operate in a way that like takes into consideration what, the audience might think because she's like, that's a recipe for disaster. Like yeah. it'll come off as inauthentic. It you'll have regrets about like things you did and said. She was like, so come in here and be yourself. I think you're gonna fit in great. And I think I did. I mean, I left with a lot of very good friends. So I think it's a good sign. Um, but that was it. And I'm glad I followed her advice. Did you adjust well to the cameras? Were you constantly like looking in the corners of the wall, trying to figure out where they were? Or did you just walk in, forget they were there and live your life? So the first moment of me being filmed, I was driving into the driveway and I opened the, the door to get out of the car. And there is just a massive camera like <laughs> inside my face. And I was like, Oh, Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Like they, the guy was like, "Don't look at me," and I was like, <laughs> "How am I supposed to not look at you?" Right. This is the biggest camera I've ever seen. So, and then there's like stadium lights, like on the driveway, so that like it's visible with the cameras. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I definitely <laughs> did not mentally prepare for this at all. Um, but it it shocks you how quickly all of that melts away when you start interacting with your friends and when you start building relationships. I would say by the next morning, you just completely forget they're gone. You're just living your life and you do or say something really embarrassing. And then you look directly into a camera and you're like, oh shit, and they're like, don't look at us. And I'm like, great, sorry, sorry. So it's a, it's a learning curve for sure. Did you have any reservations going into it or was it a hell yes from the get-go? I mean, listen, I'm a very adventurous person. There are very few times when you'll get me saying no to something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have a career that I'm really proud of and that is very important to me. And I was like, okay, like, I don't know about all this. Like, you want me to go get drunk in a house in the Hamptons with a bunch of like hot people for a whole summer? <laughs> and like, then you want to show it to America. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a trap. Um, so I was worried about my career. I was worried about like what my family would think. Um, but I, I talked it out with my parents and they were like, we know who you are as a person and we love you and we support anything you want to do. And they were like, honestly, this is one of those rare, weird opportunities that very, uh, very often people never seek that opportunity. And they mm -hmm. were like, if you don't do it, do you think you would have regrets? And I, I had been a little bit on the fence. And as soon as they said that, I was like, yes. Yeah. Like, then you have to do it. So I did. And I'm really glad I did it. I have no regrets. This is, it feels so right. Like, it's really, it's fun. It's exciting. It's silly. And I have made some really special friends. So I'm, I'm glad I did it. You are integrating so it seems like effortlessly. You and Gabby both. And I know Chris... For whatever reason, we just haven't seen enough of him. I don't I don't want to write him off because I don't know. Like, Chris, I don't know what you can do. Show me what you got. This isn't yeah. about Chris. This is about yeah. you. But we've heard in the past, and you might not have because I study Summer House. Like, if I could write a thesis in something, it would be Summer House. And we've heard a lot from first timers that it's a really difficult group to get integrated in. We've had people like 
jewels stay one season and never come back. You know, Jordan was on one or two seasons, but we've heard that it's hard. Did you feel this way or did you feel like they were all pretty welcoming to you? No, I felt welcomed with open arms by everybody in the house. I, um, I can see how it might be hard to make friends with everybody as a group um, because there is a lot of history in this group of friends. Um, but everyone was very careful about letting me and Gabby form our own opinions and our own friendships. Like they didn't bring up the history. People were like not talking shit about everyone like behind each other's backs in front of me. Like they really gave me an opportunity to come in and be friends with everybody. And I think it's also in my nature to integrate myself. Like there was no choice. They were not <laughs> going to like have the option of like, are you going to be friends with Sam? It was like, here I am like, and I'm not going anywhere. Um, and I had no trouble um, making friends with these people and feeling like I fit in. Um, you know, even after that little moment with Maya in the beginning, there was a moment there where I was like, oh, like maybe I'm not fitting in as well as I think I am. Maybe people think that I'm inserting myself too much or trying too hard or like whatever else. Um, but that very quickly went away. I mean, so many people in the house reassured me after that, that that was not the case. She was like trying to protect me. I never felt like, you know, like there was malintent there. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was very easy. It felt very natural for me. It was very seamless. And, um, and I feel lucky for that because I think if you, don't have a ginormous personality. It's probably very easy to feel like you can't fit into this group, but mm. um, luckily there's plenty of me to go around. So I felt <laughs> right at home. Before we get into some of the biggest moments of the season, I just want to ask besides Amanda, cause we've already discussed, has there been any one or multiple cast members that took you under their wing, not in so much the sense of, well, maybe all across the board with, with the filming, with, you know, it playing out with social media, with going to your first reunion, who's kind of your go-to person to, to navigate this new chapter? I mean, I would really say that Amanda Page, Lindsay, Danielle, Kyle, and Carl have all gone so far out of their way to, you know, check in on me, make sure I'm enjoying myself, make sure I'm, you know, surviving, watching it all back on TV. Um, Maya checked in a couple of times, you know, and then Gabby and I are kind of navigating it together at the mm -hmm. same time. So I have felt really, really supported by almost the entire cast um, throughout this entire process. And I... I just couldn't be more grateful. It is really weird. I would say like the the thing I had the most trouble with was watching back like the first one or two episodes um, because it's such an out of body experience. Mm. You're coming to terms with like so many random strangers from around the world, like having opinions about you. Um, and I would say that was like probably the hardest part of the entire thing. Um, but I have a really great support system. So it makes it a lot easier. Let's dive into some of the, the hot topics from this season. And I know we briefly, well, you briefly touched on uh, the Maya comment, which I love Maya. Maya has been on the show before. Um, and I actually listened to your interview with Ryan Bailey. And I thought you really described it in a way that people maybe wouldn't have thought of on TV. It comes across bad. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It comes across a little harsh, um, yeah. but maybe talk about the way she went about it, even pulling you into the closet, kind of how you were feeling in that moment and, and how you feel in hindsight watching it back. I just felt so small. Um, and that really sucked. You know, I'm, I'm a pretty confident person. It kind of takes a lot to really rattle my cage. Um, and I just felt really like stupid. I, I was like, Oh, like these people, are already sick of me. Like they already hate me. Like, this is it. Like, cool. I fucked it up. Um, and that was a terrible feeling because it was very early on in the summer. Mm. And I was like, I know I'm kind of signed up to spend the next two months with these people. And now it doesn't feel good anymore. Like mm -hmm. I really was comfortable and happy until that moment. And I know that she intended to, um, just kind of give me a heads up, like, hey, people are like saying this about you and like talking behind your back. And I don't want you to, you know, like find out the hard way, like this is what's going on. And I just want to give you a heads up. And um, I always say there are a lot of places she could have had that conversation with me. And 
you know, one of them was in front of the whole group in front of a bunch of cameras. Mm -hmm. Um, and another one was in the only off camera room in the house. So, um, I was very grateful that she chose the latter option to, uh, have that conversation with me. Um, and I think, you know, watching it back, I just was like a little sad, you know, um, but it also reminded me how much I've grown since then. Like, I think very quickly after that conversation happened, I retreated into a shell. Like the next couple of weekends, I really tried to not insert myself in conversations. I, in a group setting, wouldn't speak unless spoken to. Like, I thought everyone like hated me. Um, so I was like, okay, like, n- like reel it in, Sam. Like, we don't need to be so much. Um, but very quickly after that, my mom reminded me who the fuck I am. And yes. I was like, yeah, you don't need <laughs> to someone's gonna say that, like you don't need that people. And Danielle also um reminded me that like the people who love me love me because I'm a lot, not despite that. Um, and Amanda, all of really a lot of the girls kind of stepped up and and showed some love and now, like if someone said that to me, I think I would have a completely different reaction and like mm-hmm. perspective on it um, than I did then because I've been hearing that my whole life. But, you know, I'm an adult this time. And um, I think watching that back, like in the months since then, I have really come into a person who I think I'm going to be for a while. Um, so I'm proud of the growth too, watching it back. And a person that we love. We love Sam Fair here on MPT. I, I really just can't get over how big of a statement, you know, you and Gabby both are making season one. Um, I know you talked about, you know, kind of coming in with with no no past knowledge of what these people's drama was about. But now that we're seeing it play back, we know that the majority of the of the drama revolves around Lindsay and Danielle. In the moment, when you're there on the weekends, did you realize that it was as big as it is? Or do you watch it, you kind of sit back and you're like, whoa, this, this doesn't feel... Because like I said, we know it's edited, we know it's condensed. So I guess I'm just wondering how much of this drama really did you know, take over the house was as at much as much as they're portraying. Um, yeah, I think in our group, we, we spend a lot of time together. So it's very natural for everyone to be talking about everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, not, not even in a shady way, just like in a like state of the union kind of way, like here's what's going on today. <laughs> um, and so it definitely came into every single conversation, every single day we were like thinking and talking about this. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly for the girls who had been in the house longer, like it was such a switch up, like a shake up from what the experience and like vibe in the house was previously for myself. Um, I just felt like the tension all the time. It was Mm -hmm. very kind of like, Oh my God, like my shoulders are like up here and I'm like clenching my jaw and my fists because I'm like, this is so painfully uncomfortable. Um, and everybody knows what it's like to be like having a rift with your best friend. And it just like seeps into everything. Like you mm-hmm. can't have a good day because like you and your best friend are mad at each other. And I think a lot of us were feeling that, um, when it was going on, uh, there were definitely times when it was like right at the surface and everyone's like yelling. That's new for me. Like I, that's not <laughs> a normal thing really in my group of friends in New York. Right. Um, so it's new for me, the like directness of the communication and the confrontation of it all. But, um, but there were also times when it was like simmering way below the surface and you would really only hear about it in piecemeal behind each other's backs. And like, there's something weird about that. That's almost more tense than when it's like all out in the open. So it was definitely like, you could physically feel it all the time. Um, and so that was a little bit tough. It's nice to see, though, you know, especially now, I know you, Lindsay, and Gabby hang out a whole lot. You're dating Corey, who is best friends with Craig, so I know you are hanging out with Paige a lot. I think it's really cool, though, that you can have your two separate relationships because we know the history. There's people that don't like each other. And like you said, you formulate your own opinions, and you decide what your friendships look like. Was it difficult to navigate that, or did you just kind of put your foot down from the get-go? 
I think it was a joint effort from myself and from everybody else. Like mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. wanted me to be friends with everybody. Like Paige was not like going in there like, oh, you can't be friends with Lindsay because Lindsay and I have beef. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay was never like, oh, you can't be friends with Amanda because Amanda and I have beef. Like there's so much that has happened over the last couple of years that I just like have not been privy to. And in any normal situation, it would be so weird if everyone was like, oh, you can't like talk to this person. Yeah, very like, high school. Time. Like yeah. we're all up, you know? <laughs> and everybody has been great about that. I mean, they really have, uh, no one has ever made me pick, like no matter what the beef is or what the tension is or who's friends with whom. Um, I've really had a very easy time navigating all of it. And I think that's just credit to everybody else on cast for allowing me to. Um, I'm not the kind of person who walks into a house and picks sides based on he said, she said. Um, and they really allowed me to kind of explore all of it for myself. So that was very refreshing because um, sometimes it does feel like there's a line in the sand and mm -hmm. um, I never had to cross it in either direction. That's great. All right, let's switch gears and talk Corey because we're seeing the beginning of your relationship. When did you know that you caught feels? You know, we know that you're into him. We know that we see the flirtation, but when did you know like, oh crap, I might actually like this guy? There were a couple different kind of moments, but I think the real moment happened after filming ended because I always say like, when you meet like a vacation romance, like you don't know how that person operates in real life. Right. So you don't know if you have feelings or if you just like are enjoying the fling of it all. Um, so like, I want to see like, if this guy is like polite to waiters and like, <laughs> like sweet with my grandma and like right. what he's like after a really shitty day at work. Like that's when I fall in love um, is in those like really the moments when it's a show of character as opposed mm -hmm. to like, oh, like we're making out in a mansion in the Hamptons. Like, of course <laughs> you're obsessed with him. Like, that's easy. Um, but it's the harder moments when I think, you know, you get to see someone's true colors. Um, but for me, the moment was really after filming wrapped, it was like two days after he got all of his film back from his camera. And he was like, I got all my photos. I can't wait to send them to everyone. I was like, cool, send them to me. He's like, no. And I was like, like weird. Why? Like, what are, what are you hiding? Like you're being sketchy. So the options were we had, he basically, he was like, if I send all the photos to you right now, we have one moment where we can be like, these are great photos, like very cool, whatever. He's like, but I want an excuse to talk to you every day. And he was like, we could just prolong Stop. this moment and make it last a really <laughs> fucking long time. So every single day, he sent me one photo from his film camera. Oh my God. Like mushy little <laughs> thing. Okay. So like I started getting them then and they were all like just random photos from throughout the summer. They're not in chronological order. They're from like all over the place. And, you know, we have made a lot of memories since then. We spent a lot of time together in South Carolina and New York. Like we travel together. We've been to Miami. We've done Charleston. Um, we're going to a wedding in a couple weeks. So every time we're together, he brings the camera and takes a bunch of photos. So now like mixed in with the summer memories, there are all these other memories that we've made in real life, like outside of the summer. And, um, you know, it's, it was really a special thing and like such a thoughtful yeah. idea. And I, that was kind of a moment for me where I was like, oh, he like, he cares about me. Yeah. Um, and, and I think for me, that was kind of like an, okay, yeah, like I really care about him too. And that was just a very special thing. And it made me feel really like seen and really loved. So, um, so that was, I think it. What was your talking phase like? You know, because for some of us out here, the talking phase is pretty difficult. The gray yeah. area can be pretty <laughs> difficult. How long were you guys in the gray area before making things official? I mean, pretty much the whole time until like March. I mean, we, we've been long distance this whole time. So mm -hmm. even though we like in terms of months, it's been like forever and ever, like we get to see each other like two to four days, usually out of a month. Um, and that is not a lot of time. And yeah. so I think for both of us, when we decide to commit to a relationship and be all in on one person, we just want to make sure of it first. Like I'm, 
young, I'm 25, but at this point, if I'm going to like delete the roster and commit to someone, I, it has to be very intentional. Like yeah. I'm no longer going to date somebody that I wouldn't even consider marrying. Right. Yeah. So I think for both of us, it was like, we just really need to see each other in a lot of situations. We need to spend a lot of time together. We need to make sure we don't get sick of each other when we're in a hotel for four days together. <laughs> like there, we need to see what it's like to be on a plane together. Like, yeah. what is, you know, all you have to be in all of those situations to commit to a relationship and you have to make sure it's not just like vacation lust. It's like truly really like compatible, safe relationship status. Um, and we got there and decided in March to like make it official. We're just, it's just the two of us, like put a title on it, make sure everyone knows they can't have him. <laughs> um, and you know, the only thing really that's changed since then is the title. Like we're just doing the same thing. We're very happy. We go really far out of our way to make time for each other. Um, we have the best time. I think we make each other better versions of ourselves. Like it, it really has been, it's felt like home, you know? Yeah. That's when, you know, and I got to say, when I started dating my fiance, I'm getting married. I was oh 25. God. We were long distance. And so, I mean, not to, not to like put it out there, but I'm putting it out there. <laughs> well, you're saying it works. And like, yeah. that's what we always say. Like people always joke about us being the next to get engaged. And we're like, okay, slow down. Like we're just trying to have a good time still. Like we're, yeah. we just got here. We just arrived. Um, but like, it's just like my parents dated long distance for their whole relationship, basically until they got engaged. I mean, my, my mom commuted three hours each way to go to law school while they were engaged because like, they were like, well, we need to live together now. Um, and, and watching people like Paige and Craig, Lindsay and Carl, Kyle and Amanda all make it. Yeah. And, you know, hearing stories about you, like long distance at like, you're young, right? Like, yeah do long distance at this age is a commitment to yes. another person and you need to make sure that like you could see it going somewhere otherwise like what are you doing like it's mm -hmm. okay if you want if your end goal is to get married it's a waste of your time to right. date someone long distance in particular that you don't see yourself with so um it's just nice to know that it, it works for people and it's possible and um right now we're just like you know enjoying it and having a good time but it is nice to know that in the future that is an option on the <laughs> yeah. yes absolutely now i was paying attention to your watch what happens live appearance and what you just said about the label coming in march and what i think i heard when you announced that you and corey were together hobbs leaned over and said i think you guys might see it <laughs> winter house confirmation we know Corey's there we've already seen photos of him being filmed but i mean i think i'm putting the timeline together it's all speculation i can't <laughs> say anything i can't confirm or deny um but the math is math eh? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> Not much of a math girl myself, but right, right. Right. <laughs> let's talk about the reunion. Summer House reunion filmed last week. And I know you can't give us too many details, but on a scale of one to 10 on the chaos, chaos scale, one being like a walk in the park, 10, I never want to do that again. Where was it? Okay. So on the chaos scale, it's like an 11, but I'm never going to say I don't want to do it again. I mean, I live for chaos. I'm a triple Gemini. Like it is in my bones. It's in my DNA. Um, it was crazy. I mean, I have never seen that kind of group confrontation before in my, in, in ever in my real life. So I think when you put that many big personalities in a room, ask them very targeted questions about their feelings and opinions, it gets very heated. Right. Um, so there were some moments that were like incredibly hostile that I was like, I can't even blink right now because if I move, they'll smell the fear. Like, <laughs> I can't do that. Um, so there were some of those. There were some moments that literally brought a bunch of us to tears um, in good ways. There were some reconciliations. There was some, you know, fun, light levity. There was like people laughing and, and, um, you know, there were, it really ran the gambit of like every emotion you could feel in a 16 hour work day was felt in that 16 hour day. But um, I would say it's like a basketball game. All of it is like crazy and whatever. And then in the last two minutes, the last two minutes decide the future of the whole thing. 
Um, and might I say, those last two minutes, I think a lot of people are going to like them. Um, I think they clear a path forward for the group. Um, and even if you don't think we're going to get there, those last two minutes, I think, would tell you otherwise. So, oh, that's great news because I yeah. can't take it. Like, no, I can't take it. it. I, I can't love take the it. cast. I really do. I love it across the board. And I understand that it's reality TV and there has to be dramatic moments. But at the end of the day, you know, this show was founded on you know, that foundation of this is a group of friends who spend the summers together and create these memories that will last a lifetime. So to see, you know, not just one big feud with Danielle and Lindsay, but even like Kyle and Carl and Amanda yeah. and Lindsay, and to see all of it has been really sad as a summer house lover. Um, so you're saying when you walk out, you, you felt better than when you walked in. Yes. And I think almost everybody did. Oh, that's that is amazing. Yeah. We saw Corey got a seat. Was it nice yeah. to have him next to you? It really was. I think as a new person, you don't know what to expect. And I'm so close with Gabby. Chris is a great friend. So just to like be surrounded by other people who were experiencing this for the first time, who similarly to me, like we just love everybody and we want everybody to like find a way forward. Um, it was nice to be surrounded by that. It was very grounding and it allowed me not to kind of get caught up in like, the historical beef and like the yeah. real, like the really like hot moments. Um, so it was really nice to feel like I had a little team with me, you know, doing the same thing and experiencing. I'm like, did you see that? They're like, yes, you're not, <laughs> you're not seeing things. Um, and, you know, it, it was nice to have some people who were fresh like me so that we could all kind of do it together. Before we go, if the two of you were asked right this second, to go back to the summer house as a couple, would you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we want to see it. <laughs> these are our friends. Like it, now it's a very special thing for us that we, you know, get to be friends with this group of friends. Everyone was so supportive of our relationship. They still are. Um, and, you know, we had so much fun last summer. I think, you know, not everybody can look back on the summer and say it had like the best, craziest summer ever. Maybe everyone can say craziest, but <laughs> not everyone can say best. But I think, you know, we had such a good time. No regrets. We hope to be back um, and we hope to be back together. Well, Sam, thank you so much. I have thoroughly enjoyed our chat and hopefully I'll see you at BravoCon. Do you know yes. are you going to BravoCon? I believe I am. So hopefully I'll see you in November. It'll be my first time in Vegas. Oh, so girl. everybody's going to need to hold my hand. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on an amazing first season. And we can't wait mm -hmm. to see how this season plays out. Thank you, Morgan. I appreciate it. All right, you guys, thank you for listening to another episode of MPT. Subscribe to Pop a Batch tomorrow, another Bachelor Brain Dump. We're going to talk about Serene and Brandon. Are they broken up? There's some red flags. Kelly and Peter broke up this week and more Bachelor Nation stories. So you want to be subscribed to the Pop a Batch tier every Friday for the Bachelor Brain Dump. Also, Extra Pop comes out every Monday on the Patreon. The link is in the description below. Make sure you leave a review, a little love you like assist because you know I do. I always will. We'll see you next week. Love you like a sis.